Solvete omnes, welcome to this video lesson on Capitulum Trecesimum, chapter 30. All right. Convivium, the title means party. And in the margin, we see a diagram of the dining room with Lectus Sumus, uh, the highest couch, Lectus Medius, the middle couch, Lectus Imus, the lowest couch, and then uh, the mensa in the center. And often, in fact, they probably would have had multiple small um, tables, mensa. Um, and then slaves could bring food and, and drink and um, serve those to the people reclining on these three couches. Now, it was typical, um, you had the three couches. It's called a triclinium, uh, where you three couches are there for reclining, so triclinium. And um, you could have one person on each couch, or you could have two people on each couch, or you might have even three people on each couch if you have particularly large couches for a very large dining room. All right. Convivium. Ex agris reversus Julius continuo balneum petit. Um, having returned from his fields, Julius straight away seeks out the bath. So he's got to be a very wealthy person, by the way, to have his own sort of private bath in his house. Atque primum aqua calida, tum frigida lavatur. And he first washes with warm water, aqua calida, then with cold, tum frigida. Tum ille, dum ille, while he, post balneum westum, noam induit, um, puts on his new clothes, westum noam, after the bath, post balneum. Cornelius et Orontes, Cornelius and Orontes, amici et hospites eius, his friends and guests, uh, and by the way, the word host space means guest or host. It can be either side of that reciprocal uh, relationship here. Cum uxoribus Fabia et Paula, along with their wives Fabia and Paula, adveniunt, arrive. Okay, so they all arrive while he is uh, finishing up his bath and, and getting dressed. Hospites sunt amici, quorum alter alterum simper benere cipit domum suam, etiam si in expectatus venit. So hospites, guests, are friends uh, of whom the one always receives the other well uh, in his home or into his home, even if he comes unexpected. So the point is, if you are, are part of this reciprocal guest-host relationship, um, one host base receives the other into their house whenever they might come to visit. And they would entertain them, and they would, you know, give them food and so on. Hodie autem. Today, however, hospites julii expectate veniunt. Julius' guests come expected. Uh, that is to say, he had invited them and knew they were coming. Nam Julius eos vocavit ad Canaan, for Julius called them to dinner. Cana es quibus, quim Romani circa hora nona vel decima sumunt. Uh, Cana, dinner or supper, is a food which Romans take, sumunt, round the ninth hour or the tenth. Okay, so that is later in the day, um, in the afternoon, we would say. And some Romans actually ate dinner very late at night, even, so it could be even much later than this. Aemilia atrium intrans, Aemilia entering the atrium, hospite salutat, greets the guests, at maritum sum tardum excusat, and she excuses her late husband. Julius tarde ex agris revertit, Julius uh, returned um, late from the fields, hodie, today, quod nimis diu ambulavit, because he walked for too long. Ergo, nondum exit e balneo, therefore he has not yet come out of the bath. Sed brevi lautus erit, but soon, or in a short time, brevi, he will be bathed, that is to say, he will have completed the whole process. So, lautus erit, literally, it's actually a 
two word future perfect passive so will have been bathed will have been washed thus he will have completed the bath tum julius lautus et nova veste indutus then julius bathed and uh, clothed in his new garment intrat enters et ami i think it's amicos mm, yep amicos salere jubet and he bids his friends hello Salute amike. Hello, friends. Gaudel vos omnes yam adese. I am happy that you are all here already. Quam obrem, on account of what thing, in other words, why, tam raro te video, mi Corneli, do I see you so rarely, my Cornelius? Now, just as a reminder, Cornelius is the father of Sextus, um, and he is another wealthy Roman, perhaps not as wealthy as Julius, because he only has 10 slaves, as the story tells us. Julius has like a, about 100. So Cornelius replies to his friend, Non nunquam te visere vorui. Uh, not never, in other words, um, frequently or quite often, I have wanted to visit you. Nec prius... Uh, urbem relinquere potui, nor was I able to leave the city earlier, prae multis et magnis negotiis meis. Um, we would probably say on because of or on behalf of, due to maybe uh, my many and great tasks, um, troubles, things I had to take care of for business, so on. Negotia are the things that you don't want to do, but you have to do. And otia is all the like free time, leisure, vacation, stuff that you want to do. Okay. So uh, because of my many and great business jobs, tasks, whatever. Nunc demum. Now at last. Posquam heri ad vilam Tusculanum redii. After yesterday, I returned to my Tusculan villa. And remember uh, the villa of Sextus and his wife Fabia, I'm sorry, sorry, Cornelius, his wife Fabia, and their son Sextus, that villa is in Tusculum. So when he says his Tusculan villa, he means his villa that's actually in town. And remember, Julius's villa is outside of town, um, but close by. So after yesterday, I returned to my Tusculan villa, Paulum requiescere possum, I am now able to rest a bit at amicos visere and to visit friends. Post tanta negotia magis quam unquam otio furor. Furor. Um, so after such great tasks, business, troubles, tanta negotia, I enjoy leisure, otium, right? Otio is in the ablative here because furor takes an ablative object. Magis quam unquam, more than ever. Julius replies to him, Tu ne quoque Roma venis, Orantes? Are you also coming from Rome, Orantes? And Orantes says, Nuper longum iter feci in Graeciam. I recently, Nuper, made a long journey to Greece. Idebus maiis, on the Ides of May, demum, at last, Ex itinere Romam reverti. I have returned from my journey to Rome. Unde hodie venio. From which, uh, meaning from Rome, from which I am coming today. Julius says, Ergo vos mihi aliquid de rebus urbanis novissimis nuntiabitis. Therefore, you all um, will report something to me about city affairs, uh, most recent city affairs. And Cornelius says, Et tu nos docebis de rebus rusticis. And you will tell us about country affairs, country things. Ut agricola studiosus et diligens. As a um, eager and diligent, in other words, careful farmer. Julius frontim contrahit. Julius uh, contracts his forehead, so he kind of, I think he's doing a little bit of a grimace here, right? Et agricola inquit ipse non sum. And he says, I myself am not a farmer, okay? 
So he's wanting to correct that suspicion. So he does run the farms in that he owns them, but he has other people that are actually doing the day-to-day -day basis of farming, right? He doesn't want anybody to think he would dirty his hands. Remember, Julius is quite arrogant. Said, mortis agricolis praesum, but I am in charge of many farmers. Ac diligenter curo, and I carefully... Um, make sure, or I diligently take care, ut coloni, that the farmers, agros meos bene colant, uh, till or cultivate my fields well. Orontes, qui vita rustica non fruetur, um, Orontes who does not enjoy the rural life, the country life, and notice again here, fruitur, just like fru or up above, that verb takes the ablative um, for its object. So, vita rustica, the long A is ablative there because this verb needs an ablative object. So, orantes, who does not enjoy the country life, says, inquit, prudinter facis, you are acting wisely. You are doing that wisely. Quod agros ipse non colis. Um, because you yourself are not cultivating the fields. So I think Arantes, too, is kind of, he feels like we should not have to do manual labor. We're too good for that. Um, si necese est, if it is necessary, in agris laborare, to work in the fields, vita rustica non yucunda, sed molesta est. The country life is not pleasant, yucunda, but troublesome, molesta. Ego numquam instrumento rustico ususum. Um, so, or ususum, rather. I have never used a country tool, a farm tool, we would probably say here. He's never picked up a hoe or a shovel or anything like that in his life, he says. Oh, my goodness. All right, well, that gets us down to the end of section one. So let's stop there. In our next video lesson, we'll pick up section two. I hope you've learned a few things here. Um, we can see the guests visiting. They have their wives with them. This was common at Roman dinner parties. Uh, Greek dinner parties, not so much. They typically would not take their wives with them. The women had to stay at home and upstairs in the women's quarters. But Roman women did have a bit more freedom. Still not a wonderful life. It's still uh, quite a patriarchal um, culture that you know looked down on women a lot. But they did have some freedoms, and they certainly did go out to parties uh, with their husbands. Probably not very frequently alone, though. But there you go. Okay. Valete ad proximum tempus. Bye till next time.